Buenos dias amigos of YouTube, this is Ryan with TrendLizard.com. I hope you're having a blessed day today. Uh, I want to continue bringing Elliott Wave to the masses today by showing you the five biggest mistakes people make when trying to apply the Elliott Wave theory to a price chart. Look, if you don't have an amazing service like the one I offer where we show you what the Elliott Wave count is, it's on you. You're taking a price chart, you're trying to determine where it is in the Elliott Wave pattern so you can determine wh whether that thing, whether it's a stock, a market index, or an ETF, where it's going in the future so you can buy low and sell high. The ultimate goal, obviously, of any trader here. So we're gonna go through every single mistake you can make so that hopefully you can avoid them and not make bad trades uh, based off a subjective approach. Look, that's the biggest knock on Elliott Wave out there. If you look, people will say, oh, it's a subjective theory. There's too many ways that you can apply the Elliott Wave count to, to any price move um, just to basically fit what you want it to say. I'm gonna show you how you can avoid those mistakes so that you can make good trades time in and time out. So get comfortable. We got a lot of charts to look at. I'll show you all the biggest mistakes that you want to avoid while you're doing your own Elliott Wave counts. So here we go. Let's dive in. All right, folks, let's get started down the list here. The number one biggest mistake you can make when trying to apply an Elliott Wave count to a price chart is to go in with set expectations or a bias on what you are expecting. Do not have set expectations or a bias when you're trying to apply an Elliott Wave count to a price chart. This chart looks at Lulu, Lululemon Athletica, ticker LULU, and it's a good example of how you can take something that's fairly obvious and muck it up by trying to apply it. Say you own Lulu short. Say you are wanting it to go down. Say you have puts on it. Whatever the case may be, you want Lulu to go down. You get this very, you've had this nice downtrend that's been playing out for quite a while. You get a low in March and you start getting a rally here to the upside. You still hope that it goes down because you're still trying to make money on the short side of Lulu. <clears throat> However, the strength that you're seeing off of this low is purposeful. Uh, it's very directional. It's very strong. Um, yet you're trying to label it like a counter trend move. This is incorrect. Never do this. You have a bearish bias going to this, into this trade. You're trying to talk to the chart. You're not trying to listen to what the chart's telling you. This strong move here tells you that something has likely changed on Lulu. This is not a counter trend move. Don't try to label it as one. Don't have a bias. Don't have a bearish bias or an expectation that it should continue down. Instead, label it the right way. Label it like it, what it looks like. It's a strong, trendy, five-wave move. That means something has changed. Listen to what it's telling you. Don't think that just because you want it to go down, it should, or that you can make it go down by labeling it as a counter trend move. Label it as a trendy move, and you can see what happened. It gave you a trendy move to the upside, a counter trend pullback, and went up from there. That is one example. Let's take a look at another one here. This is Arconic ARNC. You have this up move here. You're hoping to buy it. Your buddies think it's a great stock. So what you do is you take this advance off the 2016 low and you try to make it a trendy five wave move. Look, it's not breaking any rules. You have a first wave, a second wave, a third wave, a fourth wave, and a fifth wave. Ah, five waves, right? This does not look like a five wave move, even though it does not break any of the rules. Um, it's the obvious count that you're looking for. You're not looking for any creative way to make things fit. Um, the actual correct way is to call it exactly what it looks like and call it an ABC move as you see here. This is a counter trend ABC move and you see what happens to counter trend ABC moves. They do not lead to a resumption of the uptrend. They lead to larger pullbacks or larger corrective moves, whatever the case may be. Um, but you have to listen. You just can't uh, have a bias going into charts, into a chart or trying to apply an Elliott Wave Theory. There's Elliotticians out there that all they ever want is for the market to go down. In fact, probably the most popular Elliott Wave service out there is perma bearish. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter how strong the pattern looks like. They're trying to find a way to justify making it go down. If you're in there trying to justify anything with your labeling, you're doing it wrong. Just listen to what the charts are telling you. This is a counter trend move. Label it as a counter trend move, and you're going to keep yourself safe. The second biggest mistake you can make when trying to apply Elliott Wave to a price chart is to get creative with your labelings. And this is, kind of goes along the same lines as having a bias when you go in. You don't want to just see what fits what you can jam onto the chart. Um, you don't want to be creative. You want to look and find the most obvious thing um, that makes sense and it 
represents the true spirit of what's going on with the price action here. So here's an example. This is Apple. Look, it traced out a really nice ABC pullback. We know ABC pullbacks are counter trend moves. Three wave moves are always counter trend moves. Trendy moves are five wave moves. So at this low, you might be really excited thinking this is a great buying opportunity on Apple. Um, so the, you start getting some strength here. It comes to the upside. It kind of takes this choppy, funky, general five wave form. So uh, you could be creative and say, oh, this is the start of a new trend. We're going to buy it. This looks like a five wave move. Even after you get a large pullback and you get most of this retraced, you say, nope, it hasn't retraced this entire move. This is creative. This is creative, uh, a creative Elliott wave labeling and doesn't represent what's truly going on. Here is what truly is going on here. You had this, this is the choppy move that happened to the upside after that ABC pullback. It was still part of a larger counter trend move. When a three wave move completes, as much as we would love for it to resume its uptrend, if you're not getting trendy upside movement, it means the, the pullback's not over. Basically, the first ABC move is just wave A of a larger ABC move. Now, when you get the true low, this is what happens. You get strong, trendy price action to the upside to tell you that that pullback is over. Obviously, this would have been an insane buying opportunity on Apple when it was trading back at 40 cents. But the point is, don't get creative. You want to go with the most obvious Elliott Wave labeling out there. Just because something might fit on the chart and doesn't necessarily, uh, there is no glaring weaknesses, don't do it. Don't jam things on the chart. Look for the most obvious things. So here, here's an example, okay? Um, what's what here? The, this went sideways forever. This went up forever. What's the obvious thing that's going on here? This is obviously a counter trend move. This is obvi obviously a trendy move. Don't ever try to call it anything that is not super apparent on the chart. Look, sometimes an unapparent or, or a less clear or less obvious thing happens. That's okay. I mean, that's why we have tight stop levels. You might have to get yourself out of a position that looks like it's a, a counter trend move, uh, but turns out to be a real slow leading diagonal or something like that. The point is, always just listen to what it's telling you. If it looks and feels like counter trend movement, believe it. And if it looks like trendy movement, Believe it. Expect it to continue. Okay, so now let's look at the third biggest mistake you can make when trying to apply Elliott Wave to a price chart, and that is jumping to conclusions. Never jump to conclusions. Just because a pattern could be complete doesn't mean it is. Look, one of the coolest part about Elliott Wave is that it can forecast turning points, and it's kind of a fun trick to say, hey, yeah, no, look, a five-wave move is completed. This must be an important high. This must be the start of a larger pullback. Tell your friends, tell your coworkers, show how cool you are. But in reality, until you get proof that this is an actual high, you can't just go and sell. You need to have proof that this is the end of this five-wave move. Here's what happened in this case, and this is actually what's happening right now. You had a nice five-wave move off of the late 2018 low on the S&P 500. Um, but instead of continuing this pullback, what you had was an extended move that continued. So if you were to sell uh, prematurely, this is where you sold. You sold somewhere back here. So you're selling maybe at 265. It's gone all the way up to 280 and still counting at the moment. So never assume or never jump to conclusions until you get proof that this up leg has completed. The way I look for proof is I want to see some deeper retracement of this final fifth up leg. Personally, I look for something deeper than a 61.8% retracement of the final up leg. Once you get that, that's an indication that things have changed, and then you're not jumping to conclusions. You're getting rock solid proof that there is a change and that a larger pullback is at hand. The fourth biggest mistake you can make when trying to use Elliott Wave when looking at a price chart is to get impatient and again not waiting for proof of what you think is going on and this is a good example of that and uh, it's just another way that you need to make sure that what you think is happening is actually what is happening so this is a yeah a very long name CIG will go with CIG the ticker um, this was a very nice decline trendy five wave decline off the 2014 high into the 2016 low so then you get this recovery, there's some overlap, there's some choppiness. Uh, it could very easily be labeled as a counter trend move. So it moves up into its yellow resistance area. This is exactly where we look for highs to happen. Once it did that, it turned lower and started pulling back. So this could have been a major high. This could have kicked off another major five wave decline like you saw here. You could have saw the same thing here. But you need proof. And by that, I mean you want to see 
trendy downside movement occur to indicate that, in fact, trendy price action has returned to the downside, right? Pretty obvious. Instead, what you get here is you get this three-wave move, and then you start getting some strength. You're not getting proof that this is a counter-trend move and that the downtrend has resumed. So if you let it play out a little bit here, what you get, you get this counter-trend action, and then you get another very strong up leg. Because this downside action here was not trendy, it told you that this was not the resumption of the downtrend. Instead, this is some counter-trend action, meaning that whatever happened off the beginning of 2016 was not over. Maybe it's a first wave as a leading diagonal. Uh, maybe it's an A wave. Who knows? We'll find out as it goes. But what we did know is that when this move proved to be a counter-trend move and not a trendy move, it meant that additional strength was coming, and that's exactly what happened. So always wait for proof before you start trading uh, a pattern that you think is playing out. The fifth biggest mistake you can make when using the Elliott Wave Theory is to ignore new information. You have to adapt when price tells you to. Look, you can have a pretty clean count or a pretty clean price move and have a pretty clear expectation of what should happen. Um, but if it doesn't happen, you need to adapt. You need to be adaptable and understand when whatever you think is happening based on your Elliott Wave count proves wrong, you need to be willing to move quick uh, to get on the right side of it. Here's a good example, and this is fairly recent. This was at the December uh, 2018 low, which is a, an important low. Uh, the market's really shot higher off, off of that. Uh, but if you look what happened here in December, you had this super sh sharp down leg. Uh, it looked like an ending pattern, a C wave down, so we expect a five wave move. You had the first down move here, uh, second wave recovery, third wave down, and then what looked like a fourth wave recovery. It looks like we should get one more low, right? I mean, everything's just pointing to a pretty clear ending pattern that should get one more low and turn higher from there. That didn't happen. What happened is DIA, uh, the Dow ETF, um, look, this was the move that looked like a fourth wave, didn't happen. It reversed up and continued higher from here. So at what point do you know that it's not a fourth wave anymore? For me, it's when it retrace, retraces more than 61.8% of this third wave down. Another way you could do it is as soon as it overlaps with wave one's low. As you know, uh, according to Elliott Wave Theory, you can't have overlap between wave four and wave one. Once you had that happen, um, this is new information. This is telling you that the low is in. Even though it looked like we should have got a fourth wave down, it didn't happen. Price reversed up. Um, so that's an indication that something different is happening and that you need to consider this the low to wave C. Let me look at a different or a different example here. Uh, this is the SPY, and these are tricky situations, okay? These are, are trades that you are very likely going to take a small loss, and it, it's a very good reason why to use tight stop levels as we've described in previous videos. Um, but what you have here is you have this very sharp decline, looks like an ABC decline, uh, which is a counter trend move, obviously, and then you get a very clear five-wave advance to the upside, uh, suggesting that the uptrend has resumed. From there, you get a pullback, a nice counter trend pullback, and then SPY turns higher again. This looks like a buying opportunity, right? I mean, you have a nice five wave advance, it's a counter trend move to the downside, you're getting a breakout, it found support where it should, everything is pointing higher. However, what happened? Uh, it broke out to the upside, it set a new high, and then it reversed down again. So even though you thought this was the start of a new trend, because it was a nice five wave move, what happened is it reversed, went back up, and reversed again. So what it left you with instead was a counter trend ABC move. That tells you that the uh, pullback is not yet over. If you're getting counter trend moves to the upside, that just means that the uptrend has not resumed yet. You're getting a larger pullback. When you will know that is when this up leg is retraced by more than 61.8%. Once that happens, that tells you you have to pay attention to the new information. You have to adapt. You have to get out of the trade, expect a larger pullback, and then just continue to wait for this counter trend pullback to finally end, which it ultimately did. It took a long time all the way to December, so that's exactly why you don't want to just sit through a move like this. You just want to get out and uh, get out of the way and allow price to do what it's going to do. All right, folks, so there you have it. Those are the biggest mistakes you can make when trying to put an Elliott Wave count or labeling on a price chart. The most important thing is you don't want to have a bias going in. Don't have expectations. Just listen to what the chart's trying to tell you, and uh, it'll guide the way for you. Um, the other thing is you never want to get creative with your labelings. You want to go with what's most obvious 
uh, on the price chart. If it looks like a trendy move and it's clear and then it's clear that something followed it, that something has changed and it looks like a counter trend move, call it what it is. Don't try to make it anything it's not. And if it requires you to adapt and change what your expectations are, well then do it because the chart is all that matters. Price actions is all that matters. If you try to make it what you want it to be, then you're not really listening to the charts. So I hope that's helpful. We'll keep putting out these videos. Please subscribe to this channel. We're trying to build it as, as big as we can and just get the word out about Elliott Wave and show it to the masses and show that it's just not as complex as it is. Uh, it can seem to be when you're getting started. So have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you again next week. Take care.